What's up, everybody? It's Big Brian here, SLC Audio. We're here with Joey Bradford from the band Hell or High Water. We just got done watching them here in Salt Lake City. And uh, today, we're getting for a little special treat because Joey's going to walk us through some of his pedal board and how he got the sound for the solo on Another Good Time, which is off the album Vista. It's an incredible album. Hopefully you guys saw the interview we did with Brandon a couple months back. But we're going to talk to Joey a little bit about production, getting the sound of the guitars, and then we're going to walk you through the sound that they did to get uh, the sound on Another Good Time, which is, again, it's the, the tone is just like, it's oh my gosh. One. It's like, an, like it. oh yeah, totally is my favorite. Like, first time I heard that, I came on and I was like, it's oh my gosh, one. what did they do yeah, man. to get that tone? So It's a fuzzy world out there, you little know, fuzzy just world. living in it. Yeah. So talk about recording with Fred. You guys went out again, you went out to, uh, you know, somewhere in the deep, darkest regions of yeah. Texas at Sonic Ranch. Tornillo, talk about, Texas. Yeah. Talk about what it was like going out and setting up camp at the so that was that was an incredible experience you know when we originally started talking with fred about where we wanted to do the record we checked out a couple of studios in la you know a couple, a couple of the standard spots that were close to home and it just wasn't it wasn't resonating we went to some really cool spots but it was just like man the second we walk out the door of the studio we have a friend that lives down the road and something like that so fred had, had brought up the idea of checking out sonic ranch and and fortunately it ended up working out so we go out to the middle of nowhere in Tornillo, Texas, outside of El Paso, and uh, we're in the middle of this 300-acre pecan farm, and right in the center of it, there's five studios, and we were in a big, giant live room with every piece of gear you could ever want to use, and yeah, it was like kids in a candy store. We had enough time to experiment with stuff. It was, it was pretty unreal, you know. Stayed on the property and recorded there morning, noon, and night. I can't remember if it was on your album, but I know Fred was talking about maybe making you guys not be able to use specific equipment? Did he put any restrictions on you as far there as guitars? There wasn't necessarily restrictions that he put. We just, we tried everything, which is, uh, you know, everyone always wants to do that. You always have the idea of let's go into the studio and experiment and whatever, but circumstances don't always lend that, you know. But this experience was like that, where we, you know, we have five guitars sitting out from old Telly to an old Strat to an old Les Paul to whatever, you know, running through a million different pedals, we have five heads stacked, four cabs, like different mics, e every combination you could come up with, you know, to come up with this this really cool, weird sounding stuff that we put on the record. You know, it definitely doesn't sound like your normal modern rock record. Right. So let's let you you were in the band at the you know in the early stages, yep. and you switched transitioning from the bass into the guitar. Talk oh, yeah. about that transition because I know that you, you know as a bass player you're working on building the foundations but coming from the foundational part of the band into the actual leads and the tones that you're going for how did that play a part in the studio well that was uh, you know this was my first time really playing guitar on a record really like I, I've been a bass player since I was 17 you know and, and even playing with Kyle I've been playing with him as a drummer since I was 17 so we just rhythm section on lock you know but um through the changes in the band and kind of going through different members and figuring out where we're going to go and, and who's going to do it with us, I just kind of by default ended up writing a lot of a lot of the stuff while we were writing the record and, um, you know, really kind of surprised myself with, with being able to do it. It had been so long. So, yeah, I just jumped right into it and I'm just like, you know, I'm going to jump in with both feet and see if I can pull this off and Fred was confident in that. The band was confident in that and yeah, so that was definitely fun for me. You know, I, I had no gear. Like, when I started playing guitar, I went from, you know, I had all this vintage bass stuff and everything I could ever want for years, and then it's like, oh, crap, now i got to buy everything, you know, so... So what has been your go-to then? It, I mean, you're finding your sound in the studio, your pedal board has kind of morphed, you know, pretty yeah. significantly <laughs> since the yeah. last time I saw you. Yeah, Talk yeah. about what your... Um, what you're doing to Man, achieve your sounds. I've always had an obsession with fuzz pedals, you know, as you do when you're a string player, but um, finally getting to jump over to guitar, I got to, to kind of get some of the stuff I always wanted and I never had a use for playing bass. So, um, you know, the experimentation has been so much fun for me and, and I've changed a bunch of pedals over the last few months, but, you know, those, it, with the intention of trying to get it as close to the record as possible. Right. Um, but yeah, man, I, I, I might have gone overboard on the record, like as far as making it practical to perform live, but we got enough enough pedals on there to keep powering all the fuzz I want, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, let's see. 
you said you know you're trying to get and and mimic some of your uh, studio tone live. Oh, yeah. Is that something that you feel is integral to your sound, or you feel like you do that just because it satisfies you, or you want oh, to no, that's, satisfy? That's part of it, man. Like our, you know, the the really chirpy octave fuzzy stuff. Like when I'm doing that, it's so appropriate. And I've, you know, we'll we'll practice the parts and I'll plug into my amp at home. You know, it's like all right, let's jam, and it's just not the same. Right. Like there's something missing. This is dumb. You know, but. You kick on the right pedal and you get it going the way that it's supposed to sound and it makes the feel of the song get there, you know, so. You guys probably wonder at home what we keep looking at is pedal boards off. My pedal boards over there, Sorry. Just off camera here, oh, we're talking about it. Is. We are gonna go yeah. and take a tour of his pedal board here in just a second and he's gonna yeah. walk us through that tone that we were talking about. Um, if people haven't heard about you, you're out here on tour, what's one thing that they should be able to expect from Hell or High Water? Uh, a party. I mean, we definitely are bunch of rowdy sweaty hairy dudes losing our dang minds on stage so you know playing good is is a byproduct and i think we get lucky when that happens but we're out there to have a good time man i mean leave, leave, leave your stuff at home come come listen to another good time you know what i mean yeah yeah we're yeah. trying to have fun out here you know yeah well we're gonna jump over and talk about the pedal board so walk us through the different elements of what's going on especially in the solo of another good time all right, so this is fun, actually. This all start here. Everything is running through here, which is just a, the PXA looper. It's kind of nice. It gives you some presets for all the normal stuff. And then everything else is set in two different banks, which I switch back and forth here. But another good time, I'll keep all my effects on, which is basically I have the delay and reverb and the phaser in my effects right here. And then I'll hit over to my what I'm calling my lead, but we start with the Octavix which is kind of the main crunch. That's that main chirpy, like, you know, uh, stuff. That's the freaking tone. But I start here, everything's straight up, and it just crunches so good. That's my jam. Usually throw it on the neck pickup. And then for live aspects, I'm either hitting uh, the DD6 or the reverb on for that. But everything is coming from the neck pickup and this guy right here. And it's my jam. Yeah, these, these two are probably my favorite pedals that I have. The, the MXR Submachine is kind of like a secret weapon. You get that Tron sounding fuzz that I kind of throw all over the place during our set. But yeah, this is, whenever I do those chirpy leads, it's the Octavix, and this thing is, is mind-blowing what it can do. And it's, you know, affordable too, which is good. What are you using the Whammy on? So I use the Whammy on, uh, so the solo for Don't Hate Me, I do pretty much everything on here. And then there's also the solo in uh, Don't Stop, Get Up, I'm using this. And I'm using it in the same function. I'm just using the octave up, octave down. So all the solos will start with that sludgy big octave on it, and then I'll slide up for the, the octave up. And yeah, that's what I love about these three in particular. So the Octavix, the Submachine, and the Whammy, they're all like that, that sub fuzz sound. But each one of them is so drastically different. So when I mix them together too, it gets even crazier. Like when I use the whammy with the Octavix, it's like you can't even understand what notes you're playing. It's like that cool though. Yeah. When you uh, when you're using your your head, you've got the orange over there. Yep. Are you leaving it when you go into solo? Are you leaving it in the crunch channel? Are you. Oh yeah, it's it staying in crunch. And that's what's crazy with the the MK3 is the the gain is so buttery. And I mean, you can go from like a low vintage gain to a super high gain metal sound very quick, you know? So, I mean, I'm, that's almost the only thing that I ever touch when we get in a room is all just the game, you know? And then once you're throwing the fuzz on like a decently high game amp, it's just, the, it's retarded. It's right. ridiculous, you know, so. Awesome. Yeah. So if you had any advice to young guitarists out there looking to get into something to help shape their tone, oh, yeah. where would you tell them to start? I honestly, I feel like the Digitech Whammy is the coolest pedal that's ever existed. You know, first time I ever heard both. I mean, I feel like all the cool stuff I ever heard from bands I like, it's like, what are they doing? They're using the Whammy, you know what I mean? And for all the different functions. And now the Whammy has, you know, another half of it, the newest model where you can do, you know, pitch shifting and octave changing and all this stuff before you even use the Whammy function. So this thing is something that you can write a whole record of stuff you never thought you could write. And that that's for real. Like this is the most fun toy I've ever had. And then honestly, the submachine, 
is crazy. You know, if you like anything fuzz from, you know, the Black Keys to Wolf Mother to whatever it is, like that crazy stuff, you get that Jimi Hendrix chirp, like this, this is fun. And there's so many different functions with this. You know, you can put the octave on, there's a different sub version of it. The knobs are insane, like everything changes so drastically, but these two are really fun and they're really unique. So you can you can definitely create your own sound by by using these two and you know and having a good amp to start with, obviously. But I mean I could fly and play a whole set with just these two pedals. That wouldn't be as fun, but right. I could. But I could technically, you know. Cool. Well thanks yeah. for walking us through your pedal board. Thanks for having me. I love this thing. Yeah. Awesome. Again, I wanna say thanks to Joey and Heller Highwater for letting us do this interview. Thanks to you guys for watching. Thanks to Aaron Olson, Jared Bigelow, and the rest of the crew that came out here to help me out tonight. I'm Big Brian from SLC Audio with Joey Bradford. Make sure you guys subscribe. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Thanks for having me.